have already dealt with the very first materials that were used to produce writing. Now we will examine one by one the three materials that were massively employed in the West in the making of manuscripts. And in chronological order, these materials are papyrus, parchment and paper. We will naturally start with papyrus. We will see the plant it is made from, how its use is spread all across the shores of the Mediterranean Sea, and how a leaf of papyrus is made. The papyrus leaf is made from the stem of the plant of the same name, that in antiquity grew spontaneously in the Nile Delta in Egypt. Unfortunately, the original Egyptian variety of papyrus plant went extinct due to overexploitation, and the variety that now grows there is a Sicilian variety that was imported via France in the 19th century. Besides for making the leaves to write on them, papyrus was used for almost anything in ancient Egypt. Baskets, ropes, wigs, bandages, shoes, medicinal balms and even boats were made of papyrus. To determine the starting point where papyrus was converted into a writing support by the Egyptians is not an easy task. The first papyrus roll preserved has been dated around the year 3000 BC, but it contains no writing. From Egypt, papyrus used as a writing support passed on to Phoenicia in the second millennium BC, and it appears that the Phoenicians spread its use into their borderlands. As a result, papyrus was already used in Assyria and Palestine during the 7th century BC. The dates of the introduction of the papyrus in Greece have been highly controversial. The most optimistic scholars have hypothesized that it could have happened as soon as the 1500 BC, and yet it could be that papyrus was not known in Greece until the 700 BC. To Rome, the most probable arrival date is during the 3rd century BC, and there, in Rome, it became so successful as a basic consumption item that when, according to Pliny, during the reign of Emperor Tiberius, there was some scarcity due to a bad season, the Urbs experienced social unrest, and the emperor had to establish a rationing for its distribution. After the Islamic conquest of Egypt, papyrus continued to be sold in Europe, at least for some time, until Caliph Abd al-Malik forbade the exports. In spite of the fact that there was papyrus manufacturing in Sicily, it became a luxury product and its use ceased finally at some point during the 11th century, but by then the Egyptian production had stopped as well. We know how the papyrus leaves were made thanks to the description transmitted by Pliny. From the central part of the stem that has a triangular shape and can reach up to 5 meters in height, some thin strips are cut, and they are set onto a white table, side by side, in a way that they overlap a little. A second layer, perpendicular to the previous one, is then set on top, so that a sort of rectangle is shaped. The leaves are formed, once it was pressed and bright in the sun, was polished with an instrument made of ivory or the shell of a mollusk, or was beaten until the surface was as flat and soft as possible. However, this description provided by Pliny, although probably accurate, is too generic, and the modern craftsmen have adapted it in one way or another in order to get acceptable results. The leaves, called plaguli in Latin, were then pasted laterally by means of a glue made with water, flour and vinegar. The red border of each plagula, in a width of approximately 1 cm, was overlapped on the following one, so that the suture line was well consolidated. This union between leaves was called colesis. The result was a strip of around 20 leaves that was sold as a roll. But all papyri achieved the same quality. In general, papyrus quality decreased from Pharaonic to Roman times, despite the decent quality of papyrus sold during the 4th century. However, from that century on, 
final product is only found occasionally. Given the frailty of the material, extremely perishable, especially in European climax, not very many Latin pieces on papyrus have survived to the present. We have found some fragments from the Roman era in modern Egypt, mostly in Oxyrhynchus, the Nile Valley and El Fayum, many of which are now in the British Library in London. And we have of course the papyri discovered in Herculanum, today in Naples, and Dura Europos in the margins of the Euphrates River and some other enclaves in Palestine. From medieval era, we have in the West a few codices written on papyrus and a couple of dozen charters. It seems papyrus was very appreciated for issuing charters, maybe because any amendment made on the papyrus was by far more visible than on parchment. 